Hello, BookTube, and welcome back to a series of videos in which I am reading you a book. We are reading The Gospel According to St. Matthew, and we have reached the end. In the last chapter, we saw the, the final days of Jesus, the character we've been following all throughout the Gospel. His followers have been scattered to the winds. He has been handed over to the chief priests of the temple. And with the, uh, the connivance of the Roman procurator, Pontius Pilate, he has been whipped, scourged, beaten, humiliated, and put to death, crucified. Darkness covers the land for hours. When this happens, the great heavy curtain of the temple rends from top to bottom spontaneously. Uh, and Jesus cries out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And dies. Uh, that's where Mark ends the story. But Matthew has one more chapter. Uh, the chapter that is the glory, the essence, and the heart of Christianity. Uh, so we will read here chapter 28 to finish up uh, the Gospel according to St. Matthew. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment was white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and become as dead men. The keepers meaning the guard that the temple, drew, the temple put around the tomb. And the, the angel answered and said unto the, unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here. He is risen as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly, and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. Lo, I have told you. The classic herald formulation, whether it's a human herald, or in this case, a divine herald, at some point, usually at the end of their message, as a period to what they have said, they say, I have spoken. In other words, this is what I had to say. This is end message, which a tape recorder would be saying. Uh, and they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy, and did run to bring the disciples word. And as they went to tell the disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. Now when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city, and shewed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders, and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night, and stole him away while we slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him, and secure you. So they took the money, and did as they were taught, and this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. In other words, the scribes and chief priests of the temple are told by the guards what happened. The guards were awake. They saw it all. They, they were struck down. They were struck as one dead by the visitation of an angel that rolled the stone back to, on an empty tomb. Uh, and here the chief priests are saying, look, that's the last thing we want you to admit. Just say you were asleep and we'll bribe you and we'll make it all right with, with Pilate down the line. Uh, and then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So we have here the core of, of Christianity. It, it has been rightly said that if the resurrection did not happen, our faith is in vain. Here is the final chapter that only later amenders gave us in Mark, which is Jesus returning. I have always maintained that one of the reasons why this this whole idea, this is the core of it, this is the absolute kernel, this is beyond any teaching, this is before any doxologies or any doctrine or any churches of any kind, 
I've always maintained that one of the fundamental psychological appeals of this story is that this is what we all want. Death is almost never quick. It's almost never pretty. It's almost always unbelievable. Some part of us finds it unbelievable that the loved one is going, no matter how they go. It always seems on some level unbelievable that they're going. And we dream of turning around and seeing them there, just standing there saying, all hail. I, be, I believe that if you shear away the religion aspects of this, you get one of the fundamental dreams of humanity. And it's wonderful, wonderfully done. So we are, we are ending the Gospel according to St. Matthew here uh, with that. And we will move on next to the Gospel according to St. Luke and also the Acts of the Apostles. We will do, we'll do that as, basically we'll be treating that as one work of literature. Uh, Uh, but not right away. We're going to take a we're going to take a, a week break from reading the gospel, so there won't be any gospel readings next week. Uh, we'll resume that the week after. So, thank you all, uh, of course, for for coming along with me for the gospel according to Saint Matthew. I I know I've said this many times, but I've been incredibly encouraged by the responses that I've been getting to these readings. I have been taking my shots at what I view as literary inconsistencies logical inconsistencies uh, but i haven't i haven't been taking shots at anyone's faith and i said that at the beginning but in the past sometimes when i've done similar things like this people have not seen that they've thought if you're attacking logical inconsistencies in this ancient near eastern story then you're attacking the most personal thing about me no no i'm not and i i opened these videos by saying that and i have been incredibly encouraged by how much you get that. Uh, uh, by far the most emails that I get are from believing Christians who don't feel attacked in the slightest, and you shouldn't. This is a vigorous, fun investigation of these works of literature. The most important works of literature that have ever happened in the world, and the most important works of literature in any kind of Christian faith tradition. If it isn't based on this, it's not based on anything. It's certainly not based on your blowhard preacher <laughs> who doesn't know these works and hasn't read them carefully. It certainly isn't based on Sunday school that's prizing little details out here and there and smoothing them over. We're reading what's actually there in the most popular translation that's ever existed. And I think there's a lot of value in that. Maybe not religious value, although a lot of you who are religious have said you are finding all sorts of new things to think about. Isn't isn't making your faith wobble at all, and it shouldn't. Your faith doesn't come from documents. Uh, I love that. I absolutely love that we are on the same page when it comes to this. So what fun we're going to have when we move on to my favorite gospel, uh, St. Luke. So we'll, that's a big undertaking. That's all of Luke and Acts, well, basically the same author, writing the same story, two different parts. So we will, we will do that, but first we'll take a break from the gospel. So I'll wrap this up for now. And I will see you then. Thank you, BookTube.